Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer software testing interview question 69. That is, explain decision table with example. Let me answer. Decision table is one of the black box test design techniques. There are several black box test design techniques like equivalence class partitioning, we have boundary value analysis, we have decision table, state transition testing, and use case testing. These are the different black box test design techniques, and in this black box test design techniques, decision table is one of them. But what is the purpose of this decision table? Using decision table, we can derive the test cases for a particular functionality by checking the possible combinations of testing it. Okay. So using the decision table, we are going to derive the test cases for a particular functionality based on what? Based on the possible combinations of testing that functionality. Let me give you example so that you will understand the purpose of this decision table. Okay, there are several examples I am going to give in this session using which can understand what this particular line is all about. And also decision table is called as cause effect table. Okay, some people call decision table as cause effect table. Okay, both are same cause effect table and decision table both are same. So I was saying about the examples, right? So using these examples, you will understand this particular line well. Okay, what are that examples? So I created three examples so that you will understand how to use a decision table on a real application. Okay, so first example is login functionality. For example, if I take you to an application having the login application login functionality like this. Okay, if I take you to an application having this login page kind of stuff where username that is email address and password are there with the login button here two fields are there. So for this particular functionality, we can apply decision table test design techniques to derive the test cases. How I'm going to derive the test cases based on the combination possible combinations of testing these two fields together. Okay, so what are they? If, if I can show you this diagram, you can see. Okay, what are the possible combinations we have? So I'll create this kind of table guys. You can create this kind of table in Excel file if you want like this. Okay. You can create this kind of decision table uh, in an Excel file if you want. Okay, so here in the first column I mentioned conditions by output. Okay, so under this conditions by output, I'll provide the field names. So here in this login functionality, we have the email address field and password field. So I have written them here. The possible combinations of this email and password will result in some output. Okay, that I'm going to use for deriving the test cases using this decision table. So first case is combination of email and password where valid email will be provided and valid password will be provided. Okay, if I provide valid email and valid password, what will happen in the application? If I provide valid email and valid password and click on the login button, I should get logged in, right? This is the first test case. Okay, we are deriving this case one. That is the first test case. And uh, coming to the second test case, guys, we will give valid email address, but invalid password. Okay, what should happen in case of uh, Valid email address, but invalid password. For example, if I give valid email address, but invalid password and click try to log in, I should get a warning message. The same thing is mentioned here. This is a second test case for testing this login functionality. Okay, where I'm going to derive the test cases for testing the login functionality by using the possible combinations of testing the functionality that is email password. So in the case three, I'll give invalid email address and valid password. Same thing will happen. You should get a warning message. And final case is where I'll give both email address and password as invalid still I should get the warning message. Okay, only in case in the first case where I provide the valid email address and valid password, it should allow me to log in. This is the first test case. So total how many test cases I got? Okay, how many test cases I got? Four test cases. First test case, second test case, third test case. Case four is the fourth test case. A few more examples for you apart from this login that is uploading a file, okay? Let's assume that on a particular application page, let's assume that on a particular application page, there is a upload file functionality. You see, this is upload file functionality where you have to browse for a particular file and choose uh, try to upload that. Okay, you have to upload the file. So in that case, guys, how to apply this? Okay, how to apply this uh, decision table? So here I created another sheet. Uh, where we have this decision table created for testing this uh, upload file functionality. So assume that this particular upload file functionality, assume that this particular upload file functionality will only intake JPG files and also there are some restrictions related to a file. Okay, that is 
this particular upload file functionality can only accept the files uh, whose size is uh, not more than 32 KB. Okay, up to 32 KB, the size of the files are allowed to upload, and also the type of the file should be JPG file. Other formats will not be allowed. If such is the case of the functionality, how to test such kind of upload functionality which only accept the JPG files and which only accept the files uh, up to 32 KB and not more than 32 KB. In that case, if I have to create a decision table, I'll be creating like that. Under first column, that is conditions by output, I'll provide the file type, okay, which type of files the upload file functionality will accept. And second one is the size of the files that upload file functionality will accept. These two conditions I'll provide here. And the first test case, that is case one, I'll give valid file type and valid file size. Okay, J valid file type is JPG and valid file size is up to 32 KB, less than or up to 32 KB or allowed. So when I upload these two things, you see the file will get uploaded. But in the second test case, okay, I'll give different combinations where I'll give valid file type but invalid size. Okay, that is greater than 32 KB, it should not allow. Error should come. Okay, relevant error should come. The third test case, I am not going to give the proper file type. Rather, I am going to give not JP means JPG means it can be PNG or other formats. Okay, but size is correct only. Valid size is still I have to get the error because I am not giving a proper file type. The last case, I'll give both invalid types. Okay, invalid type and invalid size. Okay, so not JPG. If I give PNG here and uh, or uh, word document or whatever it is, and here if I give the size. Uh, well, uh, this is like less than or equal to. Uh, this is uh, greater than or equal to. Sorry, this is. Uh, I have to make it uh, greater than actually. There's a small mistake in this. Okay, so greater than or equal to. Okay, both should be invalid. Okay, it should be great uh, greater than otherwise. Okay, it's equal to will not be there. Not JPG and greater than 32 KB. In both the cases, we should get the error. Okay, invalid, invalid. This is the right one. Now, guys, the last one. Another example I'm going to give that is so here let's assume that there is a functionality guys let's assume there is a functionality and there is a form okay similar to login page uh, functionality there is a form which have three fields and uh, there is a button or something on this uh, page or form okay that first field is you see, let's say you want to travel to US. Okay, what are the three things that are required? A pass, uh, a valid visa should be there, valid password should be there, and valid ticket should be there, right? Three items. So here, let's say there's an application functionality where you have to provide the visa number, visa details, and here you have to provide the passport details, and uh, here you have to provide the ticket, flight tickets, okay? Then there is a button like check button, okay? Let's say, check this details kind of button is there. Okay, if all these three things are valid only, you will be approved to go to US or something, okay? So in that case, guys, first test case, how I'll write, I'll say valid visa, valid password, and valid ticket, otherwise I'll show you here. Valid visa, valid passport, and valid ticket, so all are valid, so allowed. The second test case we have is invalid visa, valid passport, and valid ticket. This is another combination. Is also not which is not allowed guys only when all the three are valid allowed remaining all cases you see here we are not getting just four test cases we are getting eight test cases because the number of conditions are more the number of conditions are more in that case more test cases we can derive using this possible combination okay if all three are valid then only allowed if any one of the thing is invalid like invalid valid valid or valid invalid valid or valid valid invalid valid invalid invalid Invalid, valid, invalid, 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 valid, and invalid, invalid, invalid. All these cases, it's you are you will not be allowed to travel. There is only the first test test case will be allowed. So totally eight test cases I can derive from this kind of functionality. Okay. So this is what is a decision table, guys. Hope you got the idea what exactly is the decision table here. Okay. So now let's go back to the definition or purpose okay let's understand the purpose after i demonstrated the example now you should be in a position to understand what is this line states so decision table the purpose of the decision table is to derive the test cases for a specific functionality or a particular functionality by checking the possible combinations of testing it okay so here we derived the test cases based on the possible combinations of testing the functionalities right possible combinations of testing it these are the possible combinations and this is called as decision table.
So hope guys, uh, you got the answer for what exactly the decision table with uh, several examples have demonstrated. So that's all for this session. In the next session, I'm going to answer another software testing interview question for you. Till then, see you. Bye bye.